brought to life when I met you. We should be on the skies, running deep, stretching wide. Perfect love realized here with you. Come on now. Now the sun is for real. You will never let go. Never let go. Oh, it's more than just words. Love beyond my control. Out of control. Hips up. This is real love. This is real love.
upon And I will build my life upon your love It is a firm foundation And I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken I'm so glad you decided to join us again maybe this Sunday or maybe this is your first time and I'm so happy that you decided to watch this and listen along with us to some stories from the Bible. Today we're going to be in Genesis again with Church God we're going to be focusing in on that book right now in the beginning and learning some truths from that. And so we're going to be in Genesis 11 today so if you want to open your Bibles to that or get someone to help you open your Bibles to that then go ahead and get started to open that. So our big picture question has been over these lessons is who is God? And we know that God has many different characteristics and attributes far beyond what we can even imagine. But what we're going to focus on is that God is our creator and God is our king. That God created all things and that he rules over all things. And that he is ruler over our lives and over all creation. And so that's been when we've been focusing on who God is through these stories. And so we're going to be going through Genesis 11 and talking about um, what has happened here. We've mentioned that um, Adam and Eve have sinned and then through their grandchildren, through their children and children and the lines of family, then they were continuing to sin. And we talked about last week, and you can go ahead, and if you would want to, go back and look at um, our story from last week, but that Noah was saved by God, and God flooded the earth with um, people on it because of all the decisions and sins that it, they had made. And so he, uh, after that had happened, he rescued Noah and his family and um, many animals on the ark. He made a promise that he would never do that again. And so now, Noah, after the great flood, uh, Noah and his sons, they grew their families and they filled the earth. And so now you can go ahead and focus on Genesis 11. We're going to summarize um, some of that story and we've pulled things from the verses. So you can follow along and see through your Bible, but I would encourage you to read um, through your Genesis 11 with someone, um, maybe after this to get um, the full story from there. But we're going to go ahead and get into that story for y'all today. So you can go ahead and get your listening ears on for that. And so Noah and his sons, they grew together and their families and they filled the earth. And so Noah and their sons and their wives had children and then their families grew and the people started to travel through the land. And at this time, everyone in the world spoke the same language, which is kind of interesting to think about. Everyone now, they speak different languages. So how did that happen? So one day the people traveled through a valley and they liked it there and they decided to stay. We don't want to be scattered over all the earth, they thought. Let's build a city and a tower so big that it touches the sky and the tower will make us famous. The people were not doing what God had told them to do. He had told them to scatter. They wanted to be as important as God. You can kind of see a trend if you listen to our stories that God tells his people to do something and then they don't do it. And then they don't listen to God and then they want to be like God. We were created to be that way. And so they're sinning again. 
They were saying, look how great we are, instead of look how great God is. We were created to worship God and to get Him glory, not ourselves glory. And so they wanted the glory all for themselves, but God is greater than anyone. And God created people to give Him glory like we talked about. And the people made bricks out of clay and baked them in fire to make stones. And then they used the stones to start building the tower. And God came down to look at the tower and God said, if they are doing this, they will keep um, thinking up more bad things to do. So God mixed up the people's words. Instead of everyone speaking the same language, um, everyone started to speak a different language. So they couldn't interact and tell each other how to build this tower because they weren't speaking the same words anymore. And when people tried to make these plans, they just couldn't understand each other. And so the people had to stop building the city and families had to move away from each other to live with people they could understand. And God made it so people did just what he had told them to do. They were scattered and the city was unfinished and the tower was called Babel. And so here we see God had to intervene and get his people to do what he had called them to do and told them specifically what to do because they weren't listening on their own. Again, they were sinning and not being obedient to God, following what he said to them. And so we notice that people choose to give glory for themselves instead of God. And this is something that just not only happened there in that story, it happens today. You can look around you and see that people want to be glorified, meaning they want people to notice what they're doing and they want to be made famous. We see people all over this world desiring to be known by others instead of making God known. And that's what we were called to do as his creation. And so these people, they ignored God's plans. And so God had to confuse their languages and scatter them all over the earth. And so now that's like it is. We have different nations and people with different tongues I and mean, they speak differently. And so one day, Jesus will gather all these people again, God's people, people from every tribe and people from every, all kinds of language. And they will worship him together again. That's something he's told us that Jesus will come back because Jesus decided to come die on the cross for us so that we could have a relationship with God. And so one day he will return and all those who believe in him and have a relationship with God will be united. There's people over the world that know God. And some people haven't heard his word yet and we're called to go share that. But there's people of a different language that have a relationship with God. And one day we will all be united together again by Jesus and through him and for God's glory and not our own. And so what our point we take away from that is people try to build a tower to glorify themselves instead of God. That's what happened in that story. So just think about in our own lives, what are some things that we might do that we try to get glory for instead of giving it to God and himself? So that's something to continue to think about throughout the week. Now let's read our key passage that we've been talking about these past couple weeks. And this is in Colossians 1:16 through um, 17. You can open your Bibles today and maybe mark it if you um, want to so that you can always continue to be able to look back at that. And so the verse says, all things have been, been created through him and for him. He is before all things and by him all things hold together. We've been talking about that verse because God is our creator. And he created all things and it's for him. That part for him is really something we focus on today. That creation was made for him. Not for us, but for him. And he did give us things that we could live on because he's a good God and he takes care of us. And But we were created to worship him and not worship ourselves, not worship anything on this earth, not worship even objects or things. We're created to worship him. So let's go ahead and pray together. And then um, I'll just miss y'all for the week, okay? So let's pray. Lord, just thank you for your time, this time to be reminded that you are who you worship, Father. I ask that you remind us that in our hearts and convict us, make us think, Father, about where in our lives, Lord, that we might be worshiping other things over you, Lord. God, you deserve all the praise and all the glory. And I ask throughout this week that our friends, that they take these words, Father, and that they apply them to their lives, Lord. That they go, Father, and that they worship you in all things, Lord, and not the things of this world, Lord. And I ask that friends that might not know you, Father, that they come to know Jesus, um, Father, that they hear this truth and desire, I want to worship a God like that, Lord. And that they um, come to believe in your son and his sacrifice that he gave to us to have a relationship with you, Lord. Just thank you for this sweet time, Father. And I just ask that you go with our friends throughout the week so that they can continue to shine your light. In Jesus' name.
Friends, I hope you go throughout this week and that you decide to worship God above all things and that other people may see that through you so that you can tell them about Jesus. Thank you so much for being here and I hope to see you all next week. Bye.